Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. The reason why I call this equation non-standard is because we have an exponential function on the left hand side and a linear function on the right hand side. So I don't think we can solve this exactly uh, with uh, analytical methods. Um, at the same time I'm thinking uh, there might be a way to use the Lambert's W function, like L on both sides, put it together, and then eventually use the Lambert's W function. I haven't tried it, but I have a feeling that it's going to work for this problem. Anyways, I'm going to look at it from another perspective. Since this is a non-standard equation, I'm going to look at the behavior of these functions. And at the end, I'll show you a graph that pretty much uh, sums it all up. So we have on the left-hand side, 7 to the power 6 minus x. Now, that is an exponential function, or is it? Exponential functions are basically written like f of x equals a times b to the power x. If b is greater than 1, then we have an increasing function that kind of looks like this. And otherwise, if b is between 0 and 1, then we have a decreasing function, which is kind of like this. I mean, they don't all, ha all have to follow the same pattern, but pretty much that's what the shape looks like. And obviously we want b to be positive because if b is negative then we have uh, some issues. You know, uh, negative base to a power, fractional powers uh, cause issues and complex numbers come in and so on and so forth. Anyways, so these are the two cases and what type of function uh, is our function? Is it decreasing or increasing? That's what we need to find out. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to approach it. First of all, as is, our function does not really fit this pattern. Because I said our exponential function is going to look like this, a times b to the power x, but ours is a little different. So let's go ahead and work it out a little bit. 7 to the power 6 minus x. I can write it as 7 to the 6 divided by 7 to the power x. By the way, 7 to the power 6 is a very, very large number. I haven't calculated it, but it's probably... Uh, I'm thinking, I'm just guessing, um, it's probably going to be greater than a million. Well, if you think about it, like 7 cubed is a 349, I believe. If you cube it, I mean, if you square that number, you probably get, get something larger than a million. Anyways, that's my estimate. But that's a very large number, so it's, it's a constant, doesn't matter, we can call it a. So we have something like a over 7 to the power x. Okay. Uh, which one is this? Well, 7 to the power x is at the bottom, so I can kind of write it as a times 1 over 7 to the power x, and now this is what the function uh, looks like. So it fits the second form, which is where the base is between 0 and 1. So we have a fractional base, in other words, so our function is going to be decreasing. But to be able to find out that our function on the left-hand side is decreasing, you could also look at a couple other things. I know some folks are going to say, hey, this is too trivial, easy, straightforward, piece of cake, whatever. Now, this is not true for everyone, right? Obviously, uh, some people are just starting to learn math, and it's important to uh, talk about the fundamentals. Anyway, so... You can also look at it from this perspective. I know this is not rigorous and mathematical. Well, I don't know if it's mathematical, but it's not rigorous. I know some people like rigor. rigor. Uh, if x increases, think about it. Uh, if s x increases, then 6 minus x is going to decrease, right? This is going to decrease. And then 7 to the power decreasing numbers will produce uh, decreasing numbers. So in other words, as x increases, the values... 7 to the power 6 minus x are going to decrease, which means our function is going to be decreasing. So that's kind of like the definition, isn't it? I mean, uh, if you think about it. But let's go ahead and look at it from a calculus derivative perspective. We have 7 to the power, let's call it f of x, and then differentiate it. Now, how do you differentiate uh, a to the power u? Then you kind of like... Differentiate it uh, like e to the power u, like same thing, but you also have to multiply by ln a to adjust the base. If you have e at the base, uh, Euler's number, then ln e is going to be 1, so that's why the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. No ln is needed, but you also have to multiply by u prime, which is from chain rule. Anyways, that's the rule for the differentiating this type of function. So f prime is just going to equal 7 to the power 6 minus x, multiply by ln 7, multiply by the derivative of the inside. And that is the chain rule, 6 minus x, the derivative of 6 is 0, the derivative of negative x is 
negative 1 because it's just the coefficient of x. Make sense? Now, if you look at this carefully, 7 to the power of something when x is a real number, this is always going to be positive. And ln 7 is also positive all the time because 7 is greater than 1. So that's why it produces, if you think about the graph of ln function, if something is, if x values are less, uh, greater than 1, then their lns are going to be positive. Make sense? And we end up with a negative quantity, so f prime is negative, which means, which means our function is going to be decreasing. Because if f prime is negative, that implies that on that interval for which f prime is negative, f is going to be decreasing. Okay, great. So all of the work for showing this is a decreasing function. What about the right-hand side? Oh, come on. You can use derivatives if you want. The derivative of x plus 2 is 1. That's positive. So it's increasing. But you also hopefully know how to graph linear functions. This is a straight line and it has a positive slope. Therefore, it is increasing. So you have a decreasing function on the left and an increasing function on the right. They can only intersect at a single point. So the rest of the work is basically going to be, and did I tell you that I was going to show you a graph at the end? Okay, if I didn't, then I said it. So they're going to intersect at a single point, but what is that point? How do you find it, right? Okay, maybe Lambert's W might help. I don't know if it's going to work. Please let me know if you do. But uh, you can guess and check. And uh, start with integer values. Start with zero. And maybe some negatives will work. Uh, if you graph these functions roughly, you'll have an idea what the solution looks like. But anyways, uh, I just try zero. Zero produces a very large number on the left-hand side, by the way. Have you noticed? So this kind of tells you, if you want to reduce the value, because right-hand side is going to give you smaller values, you kind of need to pick a large x. But you don't want to pick... Picks. You don't want to pick uh, something greater than 6, because what happens if you pick x equals 8? Then you get 7 to the power of negative 2. That is going to be a fraction, 1 over 49, but on the right-hand side, 8 is going to produce an integer. So you're going to have a mismatch, which means you want, you probably want, if you're going to use the integers, then use x values that are less than or equal to 6. How about x equals 6? Does that work? x equals 6 gives me 7 to the power 0, on the left hand side and on the right hand side it gives me 8. They're not equal so that doesn't work. What about x equals 5? x equals 5 gives me 7 to the power 1 and on the right hand side I get 7 and they're equal. Yay! We got the value by guessing and checking, right? But here's one thing that I want you to think about. If you're looking for integer solutions obviously you have a power of 7. Maybe this is gonna equal 7. I'm just thinking, right? And then x must be 5 and that works. And that's it. Uh, you may also want to make it 49, which is the power of 7, but I don't think 47 is going to give you what you want because that's going to be a very negative power of 7. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. x equals 5 is the only solution, and our graph should verify that fact. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By the way, from now on, I'll start publishing one video per day and plus some shorts and hopefully some lecture videos. See you next time. Bye-bye.